All right, it is five o'clock, so I will call this meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee to order. Starting with the roll call then, Alder Felby? Present. Alder Ackley? Here. Alder flicky Paneski. Here. Alder Perella? Here. Uh, chair's here, that's five out of five. Will you all please stand and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, then uh, moving past introductions, barring any objection, we are on to item number five, which is approval of the minutes from our March 28th meeting. Any discussion on the minutes? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Do we have it? All right, we have a motion and a second. Then seeing no discussion on the minutes from our March 28th meeting, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Next up is item number six, which is RO number 138 of 2122, submitting a communication from the State of Wisconsin Tax Appeals Commission regarding the filing of petition for review of determination by the State Board of Assessors for manufacturing property in the matter of Georgia Pacific Corrugated LLC versus Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Anybody like to take this one? I can, I can probably take it. So what happens in these cases is that these manufacturing type properties are not assessed and the determination is not made locally, it's made at the state level. So we're just being copied in on what's going to, a determination that's going to be made at the state level. Uh, we did, however, um, get into, uh, we did hire outside counsel to handle a similar matter and we'll be providing this to her uh, in case uh, there's a ne necessity to do that. There is a, a legal issue around the definition in the statute and because the uh, we were we went in combination with the city of Green Bay and the city of Nina uh, on, uh, on hiring outside counsel and we're only responsible for something like 0.1% of the cost of the attorney because we only have 0.1% of the value of the property uh, that's at issue, Nina and Green Bay have much, much larger plans. So um, it's not a real expense to us to hire somebody to do that, so. Any questions or comments on this one? If not, do we need a motion on this or is this just a... Uh... Motion to file. Okay. Do we have a motion in that nature? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. On to item number seven, which is resolution number 168 of 2122, a resolution authorizing the addition of a neighborhood engagement specialist to the city of Sheboygan Table of Organization. Now. We had this one come up at our, I believe, prior meeting. Mm -hmm. And because the motion that was made within the committee was a motion to approve, and that approval failed, we still have this item in the committee now. So just to not let it, I guess for lack of a better way to say, uh, die on the docket of the 22 or 2122 Finance and Personnel Committee, uh, we'd be looking for a motion to forward this on to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 2022-2023 uh, Common Council. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. And we are on to item number eight, which is resolution number 173 of 2122, a resolution authorizing the sale of land in South Point Enterprise Campus to Sheboygan South Point Development LLC. Thank you, Chair. So this is a document that we had talked about previously in closed session. Um, this is a spec industrial building that would be constructed on the corner of Horizon Drive and South Business Drive. Uh, in the South Point Enterprise Campus, basically 
uh, east of the water tower that's out there under this proposal, Sheboygan South Point Development LLC, who is the developer, uh, would purchase 14.7 acres of land um, to construct, as I mentioned, the 100,000 square foot uh, spec industrial building with the option of expanding it to, two, to another 100,000 for a total of 200,000 uh, if the demand is there. They will be paying 25,000 per acre for a total of 367,500. Under the terms of the offer, the city is responsible for doing the certified survey map, which would create the lot. The Department of Public Works is currently working on that. Um, should this get approved, they will work on recording it. Um, and then we also have a TIF incentive going towards this project and that will be negotiated in a separate developer's agreement and the offer requires us to do that within 90 days of acceptance of the offer. So uh, staff is working with the city attorney's office on uh, getting that agreement in order as well. Questions, comments? Uh, Elder Flicky Paneski. Yeah, thank you. Um, there was a provision that we strike line 650 and 651 and it was an approval by council for 30 days. And then further down in the contract, it said 90 days. So clarify for me the 90 days that we're responsible for once this goes through. I'm not understanding that. I think the 30 days and the 90 days is related, I think it's related to negotiating this development agreement. So they gave us 90 days to put, to get the, the, the agreement through council and get it approved for the incentive because they can't move forward with, with the project without that incentive piece. Okay, so once we approve this, well, once we forward this to be approved, the TIF incentive is automatically attached to this contract? No, the TIF incentive will be in a separate agreement that will come forward to the council at a later date, but within those 90 days. And it'll lay out the terms of the incentive and the minimum investment and all the requirements that we would put on the development. Okay, thank you. Elder Varela? Yes, I was wondering, what else so the city will be um, create a lot through the to the survey, but what else will the city need to do for this lot to be sold? I mean, is there anything else that the besides doing the the transfer documents, which the city attorney's office does? I would say there's nothing more. Um, once we get the lot created and it's an official city lot, then there. Um, you know, free to close on it, but we're hoping that um, their goal actually is to get us construction plans and understand that process uh, prior to closing, if possible. Um, so they'll be working pretty aggressively in the course of the next month or two to finalize all of that and then be able to um, close and start construction shortly thereafter. But there should be nothing more from the city. Thank you. More question. Go ahead. Um, clarification: We are selling this to the developer. The developer will build the spec building, and the spec building will hopefully be occupied by a business, a corporation. That's correct. Okay. So what we what we found in this market is our vacancy rate in the industrial sector is very low, um, and that anytime any kind of building opens up, it's picked up relatively quickly. And a lot of our manufacturers, um, you know, they get a new line of business and then they're, they need a building because they didn't think about, you know, mm -hmm. that as part of the process, but there's a, they have a hard time kind of seeing how they could make a building work for their line of work. So by building this, um, it basically would be a shell building um, sh unless they get a tenant before uh, they would start construction, but they would build a shell and then somebody else at a later date would come in and build out the inside of it to their doings for whatever the business is. So in your experience, does the developer maintain the property, maintain the ownership of the property and lease it out? Or yes, and that's the plan here is this would always be this developer and they would lease it, have a long-term lease with a tenant. 
Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on this one? Uh, if not, we'll be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, and seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. With that, we are on to item number nine, which is direct referral of resolution number 175 of 2122, a resolution authorizing the purchase, purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for the purchase of a multi-hog CV350 sweeper for the Sheboygan Parking Utility from Hardline Equipment Incorporated. Purchase. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm filling in for uh, Derek today. Uh, this is just a purchase of a dem demonstration model of a sweeper. So they are going to be putting new bristles on, giving us a full factory warranty. But the unit we have currently is actually no longer, the company that produced it is no longer in business and it's becoming unreliable. So we are hoping to replace it with this model and have a more reliable machine for cleaning up our parking lots uh, during 2022 and moving forward. Uh, Elder Flicky Vanesky. Sure, thank you. Um, there was talk about a rescue engine. Is that, I mean, there were 139 pages to this. Yep. Is that the name of the vehicle? Because partway through, I'm thinking I'm buying a street sweeper and all of a sudden it's called a rescue engine. I will have to look at the 139 documents, uh, pages I should say. It is truly a sweeper that we're looking at. Um, I'm not sure if something was in error on the agenda, but I can look into that. This is truly for the um, street sweeper through hardline equipment. Okay. And and truly, I am. I regret that Derek isn't here to talk to us, is what? Because I know you do the money, and he does the street sweeper stuff. Um, was it in the? Um, is it in the resolution itself, or is it just? I think it's. A, it's in the description. It needs to be deleted. Yeah. 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 It, it is on it, page thirty-three. There you go. And only on one sentence. Yep. So the I, second whereas. Yeah, that oh, so it, it must that be, be stricken. Okay. Yeah, I would suggest you oh, see, I see it there. Yeah. Approval by with the striking. Oh, oh yeah, it would it would actually probably uh, so that's my office's fault. Um, it sh you should probably amend it to say funding for the purchase of the sweeper has been included in the 2022 budget. Okay, I got more. That makes a lot more Apologize sense. for the misunderstanding on my part. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Do we okay. want to make that amendment? There's another one. Elder Feldy. Thank you. Um, I, I went through <laughs> the hundred some pages and I appreciate the breakdown of everything. Um, it, what I want to know is, was this counted for in capital improvements or is this an additional cost? Because um, it, it it was three hundred and sixty some thousand dollars, um, as far as I understood it, and it was broken down later on into pieces. They piecemealed this on and that under, uh, you know, for an extra amount. But I'm guessing the three hundred and sixty some some thousand is like the total amount that's coming out, and where is it coming out of? So it's 134,000 and it's all coming right. from parking utility heavy equipment. I'm, I'm just making sure, where are you seeing it sort of coming from multiple accounts? Mm -hmm. where, where is that in the resolution you're seeing it from multiple accounts? I don't know, what, what is the total is one of my questions and then. The total is 134,000 $224. Okay, so they must have given us some credits along the way because I know I, I saw 300 and something somewhere yeah. along the line. And I'm but then as I progressed on in the pages, it was it was more broken place. down again. We did use a template. I'm gonna, okay, bear with us momentarily. Hold this presentation. 134. I don't see it in the... Then why the hell is it? I don't see it there. <laughs> 
-hmm. The resolution looks good as far as that goes, so it is it is the 134. I, the reason I okay. went to look at it is our office did this resolution. We used a, a template from a previous one, and <laughs> I wonder if the rescue engine cost 300 right. and some thousand, but it's not there in the resolution. So okay, thank the you. Resolution is good, other than the one change that I suggested. So, <laughs> so the bottom point that. The bottom would be 160. What did you say? 134,000. 134, and again, second part of that question: um, Does it come from capital improvements? Is was it already budgeted for? So this is coming from the parking utility fund. So it is se segregated funds. There are a couple um, places that they we're going to sell the sweet sweeper street sweeper we have currently, which will go towards it. And there were parking lot a parking lot that we sold. Those proceeds are going towards it. The rest is just from the capital account. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, there, Perella. Yeah, I had the same question actually from the start. So some funds, I assume the older sweeper will not give a return as much due to the conditions. So some funds will be coming from, so no funds were actually uh, planned ahead of time in the CIP. I believe, and Todd may, or actually Carrie might know this, I believe it was in 2023 and we're pulling it forward one year because our machine became very unreliable and is not wor working as it should. That is correct. So the only thing is that we are using, so we planned it for 2023, not for 2022. That's correct. what you're saying, right? Yep, and so it will be between the two items I mentioned and then there will be fund balance that will be used towards this this year, but then 2023 won't have that expense. And how much well. was that there planned in 2023? Looking right now. Carrie believes it was 100,000. And how much are we going to, what's the balance that we will need to, um, the unplanned balance that we will need to come up with in 2022? How much was with an esti I assume there is an estimation for the old sweeper. So the parking lot proceeds were 11,000, then the proceeds from the sweeper we won't know until we sell it. So then the delta is that difference of we'll say 23,000 or so um, from additional fund balance use. Okay, thank you. Claire flaky Okay, I'm, I'm following the money. <laughs> um, if, if, if we're paying dollars, we're moving dollars forward from capital improvements to now, and we are it's, a, it's more expensive by a third than we had budgeted for. And they're gonna sell, pardon me, they're gonna sell the, the equipment. Why does the equipment go to the utility instead of coming back to the general fund where the extra money went? All of this is going to be taking place in the parking utility fund. Nothing is hitting the general fund. It's a special revenue fund, so all parking proceeds from all of the parking meters, all of the um, permits that we sell for monthly rentals of a parking space, and then also the parking assessment districts, all of that revenue goes into the parking utility fund. So that fund is actually going to pay for this sweeper. Nothing is going to hit the general fund. Except capital improvements. No, no. it'll all be coming from parking utility fund. It's just a parking Ca utility, utility capital, capital improvement yes. fund. Yes. But it's not coming from the city Cap capital improvement fund. fund. Correct. So. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's a lot of fun. A lot of funds and things. Okay. A lot of fun. Fun, fun. It's a lot of them. Yeah. Follow the money. Finance joke. I like it. <laughs> uh, any other discussion on this one? Hi. Uh, I guess the only thing I would note is what stood out to me when I was reading through this one is because the company that manufactured our current unit does not operate anymore. There aren't replacement parts available, so it sounds at least to me like we're at the point where it can't be fixed unless you want to kind of try to fabricate your own, which I would not want city staff doing. <laughs> uh, 
one more call for a discussion. If not, we'll be looking for a motion to approve on this one. I, I just am a little um, surprised that that had not been planned for 2022. Mm -hmm. I can have Todd speak to that one since I was not here for that planning last year. I mean, I mean I'm sure that it's not possible to plan for everything, but since we are talking about, I mean, it's as predictable as it can be. It's not, it, it's an old equipment, so it could have been planned for 2022. My understanding in working with Derek on this was that we knew that it was at end of life and we recently had some additional parts break on the unit and it's not working to the level that we, we need it to be. And this, this new one came available as a demo as uh, finance director had stated. So knowing that this, the, the existing one is uh, broken and parts are not available uh, and there's a demo available, we wanted to move it forward from 23 to 22 um, and knowing where the funds were coming from, we felt this was a good decision for the, for the council. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm understanding all of that. And if there is such an urgency and such a need, I am really surprised that the department head isn't here. Just need to say. Any other discussion on this one? All right, if not, we'll be back to looking for a motion to approve. I need a motion to amend. I'm in. Okay. All right, we'll need a motion to amend to replace uh, the term rescue engine where it appears with a sweeper. <laughs> I'll make that amendment. Do we have a second? Second. All right, so in that case, the floor will be open for debate on the amendment. Do we have any discussion on that? If not, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion has been amended. Okay, so back to the original question now. Uh, we'll be looking for a motion to approve as amended. Do we have such a motion? Do we have any motion on this one? Did I make, make it, even though I, I made the amended? Did yeah. It? All right, then I'll make that motion. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion on this one, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Sorry. All right. Uh, chair votes aye, uh, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Next up is item number 10, which is a collection of claims to be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 2022-2023 Common Council, including ROs number 135, 122, 92, 88, uh, 69, 123, 75, and 137 of 2122. Uh, I know this one's fairly boilerplate, somewhat like we did before with the uh, neighborhood engagement specialist, moving these on to next year's yep. or next session's finance and personnel committee. Do we have any discussion on this one? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to refer. I'm. I move that we refer to the new council. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. On to item number 11. This one is claims to be filed, which includes ROs number 107, 143, 121, 112, and 109 of 2122. Do we have any questions or comments on any of these arrows to be filed? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to file. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Next up is item number 12, which is litigation documents to be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 2022-2023 Common Council. These documents include IROs 105, 79, 68, 32, 325, 109, and 133 of 2122. Any discussion on referring these documents to the next session's Finance and Personnel Committee? All right, if not, we'll be looking for a motion to refer. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, chair votes aye and the ayes have it. The ayes have it and the motion passes, there we go. Item number 13, this litigation documents to be filed. Uh, these include IROs number 110, 87, 67, 331, 160, 327, 124, uh, 323, 79, 320, and 46 of 2021 and 2122. Any discussion on any of the litigation documents to be filed? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to file. Move to file. All right, we have a motion and a second on filing the documents. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. And moving on to our items for discussion only, uh, item number 14, the capital improvement plan for the cable TV. Thank you, so for cable TV, we have three items. Um, <clears throat> the first in 2023, and the second in 2025 are basically hardware items that'll be up for renewal based on our five to seven usage of that hardware. The third one is in 2026, which is for the replacement of the uh, broadcast truck. Are there any questions? Uh, Elder Perella? Why the item, one item is highlighted? I mean, the $50,000 in 2026 is highlighted as outside broadcast truck, truck replacement. Truck replacement. If they're in the same year, same year, they were yellow. So that didn't move. That was same as last year. And, and so and what is it, what's the difference in amount from what was planned last year and what it, is planned now? No it difference? Stayed the same, 50000 so why do so it's the same amount which was planned in 2026 so 2026 was included in the CIP from last year was it the same amount for the for the OB last year 50,000 2026 if it was the same what was what's the change no change no change so everything else was changed except for that y yes we added the um, broadcast server. I'm so sorry. Would you please repeat what you said from the beginning? What is that is going to be changed in this CIP compared to last year, at least for the years that, are in, that overlap? I will have to get back to you on that. I don't remember what the CIP was for last year. I don't believe any of it has changed. Okay. So what is it you mentioned in the beginning when you introduced the subject, Eric? What is it you said? I'm sorry, I missed sure. it. Um, so we had three items. The first two are basically hardware items. The first one is for a broadcast server, um, which we're planning to replace in 2023. And the second one, was for the TriCaster, which we plan on uh, replacing in 2025. And then the third item was the broadcast truck, which we plan on replacing potentially, it'll be 21 years old in 2026. Okay. Any 
Any other discussion on this one? Questions, comments? Uh, seeing none, then, thank you. Okay, moving on to the IT capital plan for 2023 and 2024. We have items for software to replace our legacy applications that are running on the IBMI. In 2025, we have two items. One is for the data center refresh of hardware equipment. Um, at, in 2025, that hardware will be uh, approaching six to seven years old. And then we also are looking at a redundant internet connection as we continue to, uh, out, um, I guess, um, engage in more cloud-based applications, SaaS-based applications, our reliance on the internet becomes ever uh, more important, and we're looking for a secondary con connection. So if the first connection went down, we could still continue to conduct business. That uh, 125,000 would be a shared uh, portion of the total cost between the county, the Sheboygan Area School District, and the city of Sheboygan, because we all share that sync network. Oh, for Floyd Kipanaski. So is that prorated? The 125 is our portion. The, the county would pay 125 and the school system would pay 125. The way that original sync agreement was set up, it was a third, a third, a third. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, none. Thank you, Eric. All right, thank you. And next up, we are to item number 15, the capital improvement plan for planning and development. So I think the easiest way for me to do this is to walk through the added projects that were put in primarily around the Gartman Farms project um, with us just purchasing that land on the south side. So um, just let me run through it and if you've got questions, I'm happy to answer them. So as you know, the Gartman Farms land acquisition, we have um, a total of five installments we need to make. So we made the first installment on, on the closing, which was 900,000. Then we need to make four more payments of $693,750. So the addition to the capital plan is to, um, is to account for those installments um, two through five of the 693,000. So you'll see there's one in 23, one in 24, one in 25, and the final payment in 26. Um, those, the uh, first four payments would come from the affordable housing fund, which is set up for this type of projects. And the last one would either come from that or would come from uh, general fund, fund balance, if there isn't enough money in there to pay it out. But the goal is to pay it all out of the affordable housing fund if we can. Um, the other projects that are identified in, in 23 is the Gartman Polth Farm Single Family Housing Engineering. So that is 250,000 to uh, put towards either the city and or a developer um, developing the infrastructure to service that property. So that would be streets and utilities and roads and those types of things that would come from the affordable housing fund balance as well. Um, and then there's, there's a $2 million incentive for um, worth believing that it's probably gonna be an incentive towards a developer to offset the cost of developing this. Um, ideally, the city would not be the developer of the infrastructure. It would be a developer that would do that. So we've built in $2 million in 2024 and 1.5 million in 2025 to be used towards uh, incentive for the developer to keep the cost of the land and the resale of the lots lower so that they're affordable so people can purchase single family house, housing lots in those um, properties. This is the thought pattern here is this is one thing we 
have control over um, in this process. We do not have control over the construction costs um, from the private side, but if we can keep the cost of the land development down um, and hopefully help, hopefully that goes to helping keep the cost of the overall house down. So, um, which we're not sure what's gonna happen, you know, in 2025, 26, um, but we know that there's probably going to need to be some type of incentive given to these, uh, to the developer or developers in this uh, to develop this property. And TIF is out of the game because we there is no residential TIF district. It has to be an amendment of a commercial district, um, and we do not have any close. And so this is the only option we really have to try to help incentivize it. This could be zero, this could be 100,000, this could be two million. We don't know yet, but we're trying to build a placeholder in the capital plan for this going forward so that everybody knows that it is on our radar and as the development plans move forward, at least we have some options to fall back on for potential incentive to get this property developed. The last project then in 2027, Indiana Avenue Gateway entrance signage, the master plan for Indiana Ave Avenue included some signage over the road at the corner of 14th and uh, Indiana Avenue. So the 250,000 uh, is in there as a placeholder to do some signage and that would come from the TIF 17 fund balance. So all of the projects that have been added uh, to this year's capital plan are funded with non general fund non-capital projects funding um, and would come primarily from the affordable housing fund and or one TIF district. Questions on uh, capital improvement plan for planning and development? Alder Flecky-Vanesky. Thank you. Um, I am a little bit uh, confused. We have highlighted items dollar amounts that were there before. Is that accurate? Okay. I would I would request, and you can chat with the, my colleagues, but I am used to looking at number sheets, and if there is a number that's changed, that's what I'm used to seeing as being highlighted. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, Come here. The items that are highlighted in yellow, those were in the plan the same year, no changes there. The If there are any items that are highlighted in blue, mm -hmm. those were in the plan previously, but they've shifted from one year to another. Anything that's plain white with no highlighting is an addition. And this is, our, our, our sheets have been like this consistently in the, in the last five years that I've been with the city. Okay, then thank you for that. Then I need to go back to chat. Um, in the capital improvements program in revenues, we have un unhighlighted dollar amounts all the way across the board for borrowed funds. Am I understanding that those are new funds to be borrowed because they're not highlighted? We don't, ha they don't highlight, they only hire the project, highlight the project, they don't highlight the revenues. That's even more confusing. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I don't think we're gonna settle that at this particular meeting. Um, I will rest that for now. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments? Other problem. I just want to share a concern, or not not really a concern, but since um, I th I'm highly, highly interested in this property to be developed as much as possible into affordable housing as most of us are, right? So I wonder, we are putting, uh, I didn't make the calculation, but you, you can tell me, but I think um, it would be about 5.5 million or from the affordable housing funds into 
for buying the property or to incentivize the, the developer. Um, is that possible that then we don't have any leverage in making sure that, in fact, a good ratio of the houses that will be developed here will be affordable houses? We're hoping, I think it's it's a little early to try to answer that question, so we've engaged a couple um, master developers that are developing um, all ranges of housing, um, but focused on the more affordable piece to look at this property, give us some recommendations on um, what it could be and how, you know, how they could make the numbers work. So I think we're gonna have to, um, to answer that question, I mean, our goal is to provide as many affordable housing units as we can. I think there's a little bit of a difference of opinion over what is affordable and what is not when it comes to the single family because right now, a bare bones, uh, 1,300 square foot, one car garage is uh, anywhere from 160,000 to 220,000. Um, so I think, you know, we're probably looking at 250,000 to 325,000 is any kind of two car garage with a basement type housing. Um, so our goal is to figure out what the market is, We're figure out what the employers are, a lot of them are doing research on what the employers are paying, what the entry level positions are, what the people could afford for a down payment and for a monthly payment. So that's all being looked in um, the plan and then ultimately to come forward with a plan to the council to look at how to make the numbers work so that the city isn't having to put oodles of money into it just to keep the cost down because of inflated construction costs. So our goal, and we've heard it loud and clear, is that, you know, that, that we need affordable housing and we understand that and we continue to, um, you know, work through it. It's just what is the cost, the construction cost piece, and it's, you know, it's ever changing and it's not as cheap as what some people have envisioned it to be. And so we need to figure out strategic ways to try to hold the line on costs to keep the price per lots down so they're affordable. And this, some of these incentives are what's planned for that. Does that answer your question? Uh, some, yes, thank you. Fair enough, any other questions? Comments? Uh, seeing none, thank you. Uh, next up, we are on to item number 17 then, which is CIP for Uptown Social. Thank you, Chair. Um, Emily couldn't make it uh, this evening because her flights, uh, her flight was uh, delayed, so she was planning on being here tonight. Um, the $600,000 uh, for the multi-purpose room is, for 2023, is going to be paid through uh, planned donations and possibly the Friends of Uptown Social. So it will not, it is not planned to be borrowed funds, it is to be donated, donations. Thank you. Questions, comments? Elder Perel? Which donations again? So I understand the Friends donations, I mean the Friends Foundation donation, and what are the other donations? Emily is working with other uh, cor corporate uh, donators, so she is working to, do to have these donated funds from various uh, companies and or through the Friends of Uptown Social. Oh, okay, thank you. Elder Flick, you've been asking. So in 2023, the 600,000 expense for Uptown Social is new for this year or not new for this year? Was it planned from last year to this year? It is, it is planned for 2023 as part of the phasing. Uh, last year was the first year of, of the Uptown Social being created and started. And what we're looking to do is phase the, uh, con the continued construction 
and development of the Uptown Social. So as dollars are donated and uh, brought in from the Friends Group, uh, they will continue to add different rooms and or uh, facility enhancements at the Uptown Social. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, if not, this one was for discussion only. Uh, Other Flicky Paneski? Yeah. I, so all of these that are for discussion, are they going to show up at capital improvements? Are they going to show up at council? Are they done? They will be coming to capital improvements and they will be coming to council, yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no more discussion on this one, then this is the last meeting of the 21-22 Finance and Personnel Committee. However, the next committee's first meeting will be on April 25th. Maybe, but yeah. probably not. I'm hearing we will not. Okay. <laughs> Final answer is uh, to be determined. With that, we have exhausted our agenda for the last time this year. Uh, we are on to item number T. Number 19, a motion to adjourn CNA DA. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it. Motion passes, we are adjourned. Thank you everybody. <laughs>